Friday. Another Parkinson's walks and guess what? We're in the big outdoors. Wow. You know, I reckon this is only the second or third time I've been out here this year. In September for goodness sake. Mind you, having, <laughs> having said that, it puts us at the mercy of Trevor and his ilk. <laughs> Trevor, for goodness sake. <laughs> right, so we'll get on with the show as it were. Uh, the vlog that we're talking about first off is the one that contained the trip to the mine and our beloved Forrester Dean. <laughs> I think he's going slowly purposely, don't you? Down the beloved Forrester Dean. We had a hunt around there. Uh, Jim Nichols thought that was a magnificent walk. But he said I could feel it getting colder as the sun disappeared. And I was saying, put your hat on, Ron. Well, you took no notice. <laughs> My wife will tell you that's pretty standard, Jim. <laughs> he said, I'm like you. I always prefer a circular walk to retracing footsteps. Glad you didn't get lost, yeah? Me too. And the gauge on the shelf then, our Simon. Who says, uh, I'm pleased to announce the pressure's come off the nerve now. Yes, yeah, Simon, of course, last time we spoke, suffering from sciatica, but anyway, he said, all that's left now is some stiffness, and it's good that the body soon forgets how painful something is. Now, he says, I want the Parkies to wish me luck. Right, what can we Parkies all do for you? I have applied for a flexible retirement where I work one day, one year, <laughs> one day in four, uh, one year at four days a week one year, three days a week, and then retire. My friend Bob said it meant that I'd be doing more work than I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> Simon, he's not your friend. <laughs> because when he goes, he'll have done 44 years for the same company. Yeah, it's not something you're going to find these days. Malcolm Richardson says, what a find. Fascinating footage of what looked like very rudimentary mine workings, yeah. It must have been hard labour for a subsistence standard of living. Yeah, but they didn't make their fortune, did they? Very true, Malcolm. David from Spain. He said that mine was very interesting. It had a curious mix of old time mining with some pieces that didn't look that old, like the generator, the container and one of the pulleys. Perhaps what was ab absence was an obvious slag heap. Yeah, that's true actually, isn't it? Maybe it's just hidden or maybe it was a really rich seam so it didn't get much slack. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I, I probably it could get um, covered over, couldn't it? Mind you, <laughs> he says, I think they need to go on a track laying course, so Isambard Kingdom Brunel will be turning in his grave. <laughs> it was a bit rudimentary. Yeah. Did the job though, I suspect. Ah, uh, Trev. Actually, he's gone quiet now. Look, this is his piece now. We'll have no aircraft now for the next few minutes. He says, Sorry for the lack of contribution last week. I was with you and Mike in spirit as my brother and I took a trip on the Spa Valley Railway. Ah, oh, lovely. Doing family visits. Well done, Trev. I did some walking with my niece along the Cuckoo Line, which is a footpath and cycleway along the track bed of the old Eeridge to Polgate Railway Line. I regaled her with the history of the line, but her eyes were permanently glazed over. <laughs> and the bored look on her face was something to behold. <laughs> Youngsters, eh? <laughs> he said the mine he visited, of course, was the Wimbury Colliery. Oh, I see. And he says, and a bit of breeze comes up, that's nice. I just want to say... It wasn't me who landed on the A40. Yes, Trev flies out of our local uh, airport here and one of the pilots there uh, actually landed on the road. Couldn't make it as far as the runway, so he landed on the road. Everybody was fine, by the way. Nobody got hurt. Although one fellow was surprised to say he looked at his mirror and saw an airplane. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> right, I just want to say it wasn't me who landed on the A40. I would never make a force landing on such a trivial road. It's the M50 or nothing for me. <laughs> I should never travel along that motorway the same again now. I should always be checking my mirrors. See if young Trev's hurting up behind. Now, Paul from West Country Wanderings. 
for correction. Remember, uh, we brought up the subject of the uh, infill of the bridges, where they're filling the inside of the bridges with concrete. A bit of uh, local vandalism there. Uh, but West Country Wanderings, our port says, I think it was Highways England that filled the bridges with concrete and not Network Rail. That's strange then, isn't it? Because it's Network Rail that owns the track bed. But I suppose, well, Highways England responsible for the bridges over it then. That's interesting. I see. Ah, yes. They did it on supposed safety grounds for the road above. Well, that's sort of obvious. But others have reported that they were earning grants to do the unnecessary filling. Hmm. Moving swiftly on, I think. I don't want to get involved in that one. Pete Payne. Mine is a funny thing. People hoping they'll strike it rich. But I guess most prospects come to nothing. Yeah. Pete's back from the Isle of Man where he was allowed out for a week to uh, go and work at all the uh, motorbike racing. It sounded like he had a nice wander around there. Nice, nice read of uh, Pete's comments. Lionel and Mary Troubles. He said, I do like to see bits of machinery left where it was last used as opposed to the same items specially set up in some museum enclosure. Well, yeah, I mean, when you look at that there, you know you've got authenticity, don't you? It's going to be authentic. Uh, yes. Charles, Charles Patterson, said, With minds like that, I always thought getting the ore out of the ground was only half the battle. The other half was getting it off the mountain, yeah. Yep. He said the uh, roads used to have been rubbish in those days. I assume a horse and a wagon was used to get down the slope. Not easy with that weight. I wonder if they laid a tramway. The, the, the railway wasn't too far away, the forest had quite a long, uh, quite a lo load of uh, railways going through it, so a railway wouldn't have been too far away, but you've still got to get down to the railway, haven't you? Yeah, I bet that wasn't much fun, Charles. Marilyn, Marilyn Barderston. Morning, she says. I've watched this twice now, as it was so interesting. It looked as if they finished work on Friday and didn't return to the mine on Monday and left it as it was. That's, that's just right, isn't it? Just what it looked like. He just walked away from it on Friday and never went back. Yeah. I suggested that uh, Marilyn might like to take it over. Something, obviously something that interests her. She might like to uh, take it over, but she said it's a bit far to travel daily from Cheshire. <laughs> on that old bike. <laughs> yeah, well done, Marilyn. Donnie says there's gold in there, that there forest. I park it kind of pond saving me eight quid. Blimey, is that what it cost to park down there now? Blimey. I always seem to get lost if I deviate from the trail by as much as two foot. So well done for navigating your way through. It's an awesome place for sure. Yeah, uh, you can easily get lost in a forest, as I was saying to Donny. One tree looks much the same as the other. You can easily get lost. Trevor wanted to, of course, Trevor jumped straight in then. And said, surely you're still going to pay to park up near the Cannot Pond. But uh, now there is a place where you can park by the stoneworks uh, in a lay-by down there, and you can get that for free. But, uh, Donny, don't encourage Trev. He'll be trying to land his airplane there next, taking up all the space. Ah, Ron, abandoned railways. The matters of rising team are on good form once again. <laughs> yes, yes. We enjoy the input, don't we, Ron? Brilliant. I thoroughly enjoy the adventure to the mine and the frustration. Yeah, well, when you're looking for these things down the forest after 20 years, you've got to expect a bit of change. These old mines and their infrastructure are really fascinating and make for excellent videos. I've been out on the old Broadway to Honeybourne line recently. All oh, right, it's surprisingly accessible. Someone's keeping the track bed brambles cut back. Ah, yes, of course, the Gloucester Warwickshire Railway run as far as Broadway. And if they can just get that next little bit to Honeybourne, they'll have connection to the main line. But it would cost a fortune. Cost an awful lot of money. James Weeks reports from Canada. Now, this is a bit serious. Turned on the air conditioning today, Ron. Sorry, so hot, I think my sweat is sweating. <laughs> it, if James has gone to the, all the expense of putting his air conditioning on, it must be close to a national emergency, I should think, in, in Canada. Blimey. Well, it's only 40 degrees, James. You didn't need to put it on just yet, did you? <laughs> film. Uh, last week's film was another guest film from brother-in-law Mike, who took us down to uh, 
the South Devon Railway. And Trev says, Trev jumps in, the SDR is my favourite heritage line of all time. Well, that's some sort of accolade coming from Trevor, that one. Blimey. It's such an authentic example of a country branch line with every detail perfect and no hint from the infrastructure and operation that you could be anywhere other than on the main line in the 1950s and before. Well, yeah. So obviously, very fond of that one. Uh, the other railway that we visited last week um, wasn't too keen. Trev wasn't too keen on that. He reckons that's one of the worst. And uh, as Mike pointed out in the video of that one, that they've done away with the semaphores and got their uh, fancy new lights. Hmm. Anyway, Trev then goes on and he's got a wonderful piece there then on the history. He says he, he wanted to concentrate on the history rather than just all the little bits of individual uh, pieces of infrastructure. Uh, and if you go through and read all that, I, I sat out here the other morning, a cup of coffee and read through the notes. Brilliant work, Trev. Thank you very much for that. Peter Gale said, I've been following your channel quite a while here in Serbia, not Romania. That was me. Mis misplaced you there, uh, Peter, I'm afraid. But I haven't commented for a while. He says, I've been watching the Dawlish War rebuild for the last few years on the rail cams. Oh, right, they've got a rail cam down there, have they? Oh, he says, there's two in Dawlish and a wonderful feat of engineering while still keeping the trains running. Yeah, they didn't have much choice, did they, really? Because I think the alternative was a bit too steep for some of the uh, modern kit that we got. Right. Michael from Poland. Good on, Michael. Hope you're doing well, mate. He says, thank, thank Mike very much. Lovely video. The new seawall looks like an enormous feat of engineering. Yeah. All credit to them. All credit to them. Trains are still running, despite Mike saying there's a strike on. Who was on strike? It was the engine drivers. Yeah. He said, I love the journey on the steam railway. Great film and technique and commentary. Perhaps Mike could start his own channel. Yeah, I think Mike would probably say he's too busy. But there, he's willing to let us uh, put them onto Parkinson's walks. We'll get there just the same. Yeah, good. Jim Nichols again comments. There's another interesting video from Mike. Perhaps he should start his own channel and give us more to watch. Yeah, well, Mike will read that and make his decision. I think I know what it's going to be. Pete Payne. Right into Mike Locks to see there. I went on the South Devon a few years ago and it's very enjoyable. You can't be being right behind the engine on a climb. See, I did that on the Severn Valley one. Uh, what a lovely sound. Yeah, I did uh, some filming on the Severn Valley not too long ago. Uh, and if I can dig out a clip of the bouncing of the engine on that track, I can point to the full side. I did it for you. too much Parkinson's uh, this week. I'm trying to calm it all down. Our Ron uh, comments again then. Brilliant, he said. Thanks for another excellent video, Mike. I visited the South Devon Railway a few years ago. That's highly recommended if you're in the area. Nice views in around Dawlish as well. Very enjoyable viewing. There you are, Mike. Good. North by Northwest then, who's Ian. He said, I must say that Mike did an excellent job with this video. He sounded very confident and was full of interesting information. Yeah, well, Mike's been filming for quite a number of years, as you can probably tell, so yes, he knows what he's doing. He said, I've never been to Dawlish, but of course I've seen the iconic photographs of waves breaking along the wall. I can't have been much fun for the crews on the footplate, especially with the body time waves soaking them. I've never thought of that. Of course, during the days of steam, with the open cabs, and those waves breaking over the uh, the railway, they must have got drenched, especially if they were going tender for us. Blimey. I don't suppose it was very warm either. Ah, Richard then, Fireball XL55, said, it, oh, I love this one. Reminds me of childhood holidays to Dawlish before the M5 and travelling from Leicester on the Fossway, leaving at 2am to get there early morning. 
my father and I used to do early morning walks from the hotel down the front and stop off at a cafe not far from the, the stream. It was overlooking the railway lines and the slip roads underneath the rails. I think the last time we went on the, on the return trip we got put onto the, I think, unopened at the time M5 to relieve the traffic and we did not move for hours. Dad vowed never to return. Oh dear. <laughs> now, I don't know. There's something about reading that put me back to uh, being on holiday and getting up at 2 a.m. Early morning, get up to, uh, full of excitement. How do you get to sleep between when you go to bed and 2 a.m.? That's what I'd like to know. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Richard. I'm Michael Miller. Lovely. So I went there a couple of years ago. This film brings back such memories. Thanks for that. Yeah, we love memories on this channel. Got to drag them out, give them an airing now and again. Love it. Dave again then from Spain says, We were lucky with the train strikes on our recent trip over, and it didn't affect us, which was just as well. He said, Last weekend, with Dave is in Spain, there were heavy localised storms further north of here, which shut some of the main lines out of Madrid, and I'm sure they're still working their way through the backlog. A couple of road bridges got swept away. Blimey. These storms are so unpredictable and you never know when it's going to be your turn. There's a few bits and pieces um, around the world, aren't there? With uh, sudden downpours, earthquakes and the like. That's before, we, that's before we humans interfere with our wars and goodness knows what. Yeah, Charles Patterson. Another pleasant journey, however, he said, I'm confused. Brother-in-law Mike states there was no activity at Dawlish due to a strike. However, we further noticed a number of trains as time went on. So who exactly was striking? Well, it was the engine drivers that were striking. Uh, but I guess if there was a vital uh, traffic movement that had to be made, the unions sometimes will relent just for that one run, or if there's somebody repositioning uh, some of the traffic for... The, uh, the, the coming Monday or whatever, I don't know. They, they said, suddenly do that. Somebody was running something, weren't they? Yeah, but it was the engine drivers, Charles. And it's, it's unfinished a dispute now, it's still going on. Donny, I love the South Devon Railway, especially BFL Station, which I suppose is the uh, Book Fast the Abbey one, and the little museum there. Everyone really welcoming, helpful, and friendly. Yeah. And then she said, Imagine when they had to convert all those miles of track. From broad gauge to standard gauge in just one weekend. That's how they did it. One weekend changed the whole lot. Blimey. I don't know how many people must they have employed? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The workforce must have been superhumans to achieve this, she says, and with only picks and shovels and the bars, I suppose, levering bars at their disposal. Absolutely wonderful, yeah. Right, good. That's all that lot. Uh, film Club. I debated on that, uh, having shown the uh, that mine and the, the interest that there was with it. Uh, so I think I'm going to tackle the end of today when I actually found the mine. Uh, we did actually find it. Spoiler alert, I've been walking past it all the time, which didn't surprise me because I was, knew I was in the general area anyway. So I'll put uh, the next Farsi Dean one up and then the film for next week comes with coal pit heat. There's a touch of the Indiana Jones about this one. This is what happens when you don't pay attention and you don't listen, as my wife will keep telling me. Um, the area was described to me and I was supposed to be looking for a tramway. However, I misinterpreted the, uh, the suggestion as looking at the branch line. And uh, I was told it was accessible, so I expected to be able to just walk through it. But of course, it wasn't the branch line. There was, there's a branch line there, which is what I'm investigating. And I did actually go and find the tramway afterwards. Uh, this is what happens when you don't pitch. All right, Trev, we're going. <laughs> I'll see you coping, Heath. Next Friday, don't be late. 6th of December then, 2014. The mine hunt continues. Trailhead today by the side of the main road and the uh, site of the mine is only just up there somewhere and I think I might have spotted something that could be useful which is a track that I didn't really know about going off this road so let's go and investigate that 
So there's the target then, up there. Now oh, this is exciting because the mine would have needed access somewhere to uh, get its spoils in and out. So we could be on the right trail, I've said that before. It was quite a cold one last night. When you think I started this search in shorts and t-shirts, now here I am with fleeces on and hats on and trousers and still looking. I'm pretty much uh, near giving up I think. I'm believing that uh, it no longer exists. It's worth one more shot. It's a day like today. Beautiful. About half past ten. I reckon it's about the seventh or eighth of December. A winter's morn. There's still some signs of frost here from last night. Out of the sunshine and the temperature has plummeted. It's icy in here. And we've now reached the T-junction that isn't a T-junction from a different angle. And it hasn't improved our luck so far. So this is it from the uh, usual angle then. And our destination would normally be to get to the mine left. Which these days takes you into there. Been in there before. Probably gonna have to go in again. Well, there's a path or a track of sorts going in here. Big spoil heap. And this is kind of the search area. Hmm. Very promising, does it? A little bit farther in. And there's lumps and bumps and hollows, uh, it's a small plateau there. But, uh, nothing that uh, prompts my memory. Still, this is the right direction, so keep playing on. Lots of uh, stagnant pools and mud. And the path meanders between tall trees. Be quite pleasant if it wasn't so blessed cold. Okay, so here in the middle of nowhere is a fenced off area. Why would you fence that off? I think I'm giving up ideas of accessing the area. It's uh, quite tightly fenced and rather messy as you can see. So I'm going to have to try and do our best, do a loop and see if we can't uh, see inside. Would you believe it? There's our mine. Sneak a closer look. Uh, access is a little um, restricted. Put you away while I feel my way down. Well, how about that? Absolutely amazing. And peering in, with the sound of dripping water, there's an old rail. Well, I'm blessed. I knew it was there. I'm looking at the brickwork, it's a very high grade mine as well. And that's uh, quite an investment to do brickwork like that. And a nice stone frontage. That's amazing. 
I can't think why this isn't mentioned somewhere because obviously it was a very well to do mine. I'm just looking at all the brickwork up here. You normally just get bits of timber and shoring it up and that's it. And this one even has, leading out of the mine, a very nice stone abutments. And that's on the other side and again shows the amount of money effort went into it uh, in order to give them a, an entrance to their mine. And then if you look at the brickwork here, look, stone copings and facings. This was a high grade mine. And I think you'll agree, well worth the effort. Well, amazing. And then leading out of the mine, well, who knows what's buried in here. All sorts, presumably. Quite where in these surroundings we would sit and have our sandwiches, of course. Nowadays, it's a bit hard to imagine. I remember it being a nice grassy area. There's a little tiny knoll over there which we passed on the way in. Probably there, I would guess. Lovely. Ooh. The reason I've struggled up here is because this then I reckon is a spoil heap for the mine and if you can see depression just of there and if we go a bit farther along follow the line of the depression as it were one down there and you end up facing the mine, which is in there. So if we turn with our backs to the mine and walk this way, and we find, and we find, and we find something here for anchoring machinery. Ah, look at that. Isn't that amazing? And actually faces a hole in the uh, ground here. And there you can make out a stone uh, pier, the other side. And I'm thinking that this is probably the depression that was built for some sort of a winding wheel. Haul the trucks up and down out the mine. I don't intend to get any closer, just in case. That's close enough. This whole plateau would have been a spoil heap for the mine. And it's, uh, if you look up here, at the spoil heap to the left, which goes right up there, they still had a ways to go. Of course, it's always possible that spoil heap came from the same mine. In which case, a lot of large holes under here. Right. So that does it. I've got to now find my, uh, my way out of here. Try to get down without breaking my neck. A oh, little bit of maintenance. You probably can't believe how ecstatic Finding that mine makes me. It's so frustrating because I knew it was here. I even knew where it was, just couldn't find it. But now I've done that and that's good. The only issue is, of course, I set aside the day to find it. And having found it now and it's only half eleven, 
Um, I'm a bit stuck. Except I'm probably not. There's plenty of walking to do around here. So I think I'll probably go down to Canop and come back up that way and have a look. Take you with me. You've been good so far. Find our way out of here first. I've adjusted to the uh, temperature now, so it's quite uh, quite comfortable providing you've got the right gear on. So I was a little bit worried about it at the start, but it now appears that's all worked itself out. Just a matter of getting used to it. Back once again at the crossroads. And we'll take that one. It sure is beautiful out here. Well, we were always told to exceed the customer's expectations and I now got to the main road bit and looked at a rather odd depression over here. We find we have yet another mine. As you can see, the rails are still in place. Uh, you can actually feel the warmth coming out of the ground here, up the mine, the positive airflow. I quite know why or how, but it's warm standing here. So you can see the rails disappearing into the mine. Yet another one. Again, it's a uh, rather well built one. But stone arch all around there, and then brick lining on the uh, start and the abutment in stone. Spent a lot of money on this one as well. And there are the rails leading out. So, next bit of research. What mine is that? Oh, I have to show you this. Look. It's a junction of the rails. I'm now standing coming out of the mine and then that one goes up there, presumably, to spoil tip. Up there, there is said tip. It's exciting. Well, a quick look at the map. This is where our mine is. We're coming out on this path here. And there's a mine actually on the map. But no details, no name. The junction, that's where the car is. We're heading on down here.
Well, this really is five star treatment today. Nice sunshine, nice and warm. Unrivaled uh, views. And not only have we got the usual cheese and pickle sandwich and a cup of tea, we also have furnished by my wife soup. Can't get any better. Found the mine as well. Lovely. Okay, once more, the old rail track. Oh, I think that about does it. Trailhead's now half a mile no more up there. And so uh, ends the saga of the mine. And like all good adventure stories, of course, it gets solved in the last reel. So that's good. So uh, I've enjoyed doing it. I'm going to have to try and find some other excuse for coming down here now. And look for something else, I suppose. I have one idea. So we'll see. So I'll say goodbye. Join me on the next one.